In case you missed it, XCOM Enemy Unknown was easily one of my favorite games of last year. It brought back new life into the genre and did so in great and often very tense style. Now, Firaxis is attempting to increase, upgrade and enhance everything that the turn-based strategy game Enemy Unknown was with the content expansion Enemy Within. You will still be doing much of the same. The storyline doesn't change, killing the pesky aliens still requires much of the same approach and your soldiers will still be dying. A lot. So the question is, is the extra content actually worth it? So, what is it, Doctor? In many ways, cover is the name of the game and one of the biggest additions in Enemy Within is an entirely new class that completely breaks up this huge strategic focus, namely the mechs. If you ever felt like shooting and blowing up aliens had its charms, but what you really wanted to use was a giant metallic power fist, then you will not be disappointed. Rather, early on in the game you have the option of building these cybernetic marvels. Any soldier of your choosing can be converted into a mech trooper, that can then be placed into the rough and sturdy mech suits. Only then can they actually go into combat, and when they do, they sure bring a lot of firepower. Mechs can launch grenades and fire railguns, jump on top of buildings and they can punch enemies into the face. But the main reason why they feel so unique is the fact that they cannot use cover. Where carefully planning out which cover your soldiers were going to take was in many ways your main strategic goal, mechs spice up the entire missions without becoming disruptive. They feel heavy, important, unique and most importantly satisfying to use and are then a very welcome addition to the game that offers new strategic actions and never feel out of place. But you can't just go around chopping off the limbs of all your soldiers and converting them into cyborg wonders. Well, you can certainly try, but you don't need to, as the new genetic enhancements bring new tools to the table for your regular units. Gene mods can be added to any soldier you wish and offer new passive bonuses ranging from increasing their aim to allowing regular soldiers to jump two story tall buildings. These gene mods are unlocked by completing specific alien autopsies and can then be added to your soldiers, making them vastly more effective in combat and setting them a little bit apart from their other companions. There is virtually no reason not to use these gene mods, but this careless genetic experimentation and cybernetic enhancement does come at a cost. Namely an entirely new resource mechanic called Meld. Meld is located in the majority of your missions and switches up the pacing of your actions, because they do come with a timer. Meld canisters often only last for a small amount of rounds, meaning timing is of the essence if you want your genetic and cybernetic advancements to continue smoothly. This new resource is seemingly a small addition until you realize that it makes quite a big impact on the actual missions themselves. More often than not will you find yourself doubting an overly careful approach when you realize that there's two more turns until a melt node is going to shut down, or even more so when you haven't actually located the melt nodes yet as they do count down as soon as your mission starts. Meaning melt adds a lot of risk and reward to the actual gameplay. Will you rush one of your soldiers forward, potentially exposing him to more danger and having to deal with one less soldier in a fight you may be in at that very moment? Or will you instead let the melt node expire and skip out on that genetic upgrade? It's a nice addition that doesn't feel like a mandatory bother, but instead a nice secondary goal that speeds up your actions in missions. Then be prepared, as in Enemy Within, you now also have to start aiming your weaponry at actual humans. The final big additions in Enemy Within are the Covert Missions and new Exalt enemies. Exalt is a rogue human faction that appears roughly a quarter to a third into the game. They can be completely ignored if you wish, but they will continuously work to undermine you by slowing down research or stealing funds. In order to deal with Exalt, you will have to do covert missions, sending one of your soldiers away for a couple of days with limited equipment in order to uncover an Exalt cell. Once this has been done, you have to extract the operative and protect key points against Exalt forces. Exalt then works similarly to your own XCOM squads, using the same classes, but they come in far greater numbers and are generally lagging a little bit behind on research. 
they serve to spice up the game quite well, making it quite interesting to fight human opponents for a change. That can very much be a pain at times by using smoke screens, snipers or rocket launchers. Successfully completing an exalt mission results in a piece of information that eventually allows you to track down their headquarters, resulting in an enjoyable final mission. The main issues here however come from the fact that exalt missions themselves can get a little still, with few varying goals, not to mention exalt falls behind even on classic difficulty really quickly, meaning they are definitely threatening the first few times, but are pretty much just target practice by the time you find out where they are hiding. And although I found them to be an enjoyable enemy, they could hardly ever scratch my vastly superior troops. Even better though are the new and highly interesting council missions. These missions are quite different from each other, with well-designed map layouts offering a highly enjoyable tactical experience and adding quite a bit more of a narrative to the overall experience. Beyond that, there are numerous arguably small additions to the game, such as awarding your soldiers specific medals. These come in a few different variations and are unlocked after certain missions. They can then be awarded to your soldiers, offering small passive bonuses. Then there are also quite a ton of new items, foundry and research options that shake up some of the old research and skill paths while offering a ton of new toys, such as numerous extra grenades or finally allowing your soldiers to equip two items. And then of course, there are the two new enemy types. The aliens can now feel the so-called seekers that, well, seek out your soldiers and then try and hug them really tight to the point where they can't breathe. Very nice. Secondly, there's now the Mechtoid, which is a menacing sectoid placed in a mech, which will easily destroy your mech troopers in a few plasma volleys for that matter. These alien types are a nice addition, though they don't have a huge impact. Seekers themselves can make it dangerous for snipers to stand in the back, but in general are really easy to destroy, posing very little threat. The Mechtoid, on the other hand, is a scary opponent, but is not vastly different from the already more than capable heavy alien troops. Just don't get hit by the plasma. There are only tiny complaints with XCOM Enemy Within. Exalt is really not scary at all after the initial reveal, there aren't a whole lot of extra maps for regular missions, and although the new alien enemies are nice, they don't offer a whole lot extra and seeing even more types would then have been great. On the other hand, the simple addition of Exalt does nicely shake up the game, and the extra council missions are incredibly fun to do. The mech class is a fantastic addition that is definitely satisfying to use and offers new strategic options. The meld resource is a good extra goal to chase after, and the numerous extra research, foundry and of course gene mods are certainly a welcome addition that only serve to make this already highly enjoyable game that much better. Enemy Within is not going to persuade anyone that didn't enjoy Enemy Unknown, but for those that were looking to get more out of their XCOM, Enemy Within is a fantastic addition and highly recommendable. In fact, I must admit I found it really hard to pull myself away from the game and make this review, and I have this sneaking suspicion I will go right back into it after this. XCOM Enemy Within gets a 9 out of 10.